Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the What Podcast. I'm Barry. With me is Lord Taco. You'll notice that Brad is not here. Uh, hasn't been for a while. I don't. Have we kicked him out of the club? Do we want to kick him out? Of, are we taking a vote? <laughs> is that what we're doing? Oh, is Does this the care? vote? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know if anyone cares. <laughs> Does anybody notice? No. Brad is, uh, as we've said many times, moved to New York, and. Um, it's caused a little bit of uh, some scheduling issues, but, you know, we'll make it work. We have plenty to talk about uh, today and in the coming episodes, right? I mean, there's a lot that's Correct. happened in the last there's little bit. There's a lot bit. that's happened, then there's a lot that's happened here in town in Chattanooga. Yeah, that I which, think you know, that's where to, you and I live. Right. That I think relates to festivals in general, and that's why we want to go ahead and... Uh, Put an episode out this week and uh, kind of tease what's coming, uh, I think, right? Isn't that where we're I think so. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm excited for what we've got to come out here. Yeah, it's pretty Im- incredible. Uh, we'll get into it a little bit, but uh, Lord Taco and I, along with Brian Stone, friend of the show, um, we've made fun of Brian for six years, right? He's our favorite foil, <laughs> I guess. Yes, uh, but he was with us. He was with you and I this weekend. We did some interviews. We interviewed uh, first of all the Matt, the uh, Moon River Festival was in Chattanooga this weekend, which is why we're sort of ramping things back up. Um, you and I and uh, Brian spent some time with Matt Carney on Saturday, and uh, also uh, Wild Rivers. Uh, That's right. Enjoyed talking to all of them. Devin, yeah. Andrew, and uh, Khaled from Wild Rivers, and Matt uh, just prior had a great time down there Saturday, despite the misty rain and the wet conditions. And we were lined up to talk to, what, Bandarod, a Band of Horses with Ben and uh, Wild Dorado. Yes. Wild Dorado and Sammy Ray. And, uh, Sammy, Ray. Sa- Sammy yeah. Ray. We were so excited. <laughs> about our Sunday lineup, and um, you were already there. I think you said you were what two songs into Sammy Ray when the whistle blew. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I got there. You know, it kicked off around twelve thirty. Uh, I saw Maggie Rose. I walked over and saw some of Abraham Alexander with uh, Lindsay, and then came back for Sammy Ray. She just got started, played three or four songs, and then made the announcement that. Uh, she had to stop, and we had to leave because yeah. there was lightning and thunderstorms in the area. And so this was around two fifteen, two you know, two ish when they right. when they made the call. And that's when I texted you, and you were just getting dropped off almost. I was literally pulling into the Uber drop off line, my daughter and son in law. And if I'd have gone another fifteen feet, I would have been abandoned. And uh, yep. you sent me yeah. the note that they were clearing the the place out because of thunderstorms, and that's going to be a um, big topic of a couple of more episodes for us because I think what the folks with Live Nation and C three and AC Entertainment and uh, the City of Chattanooga and Memorial Auditorium, the Tivoli Foundation, how they reacted to what happened on Sunday is. Uh, it might be one of the great stories in music festival uh, lore, at least for this year. In the I last think couple so. Of and years. It, yeah, and if you organize a festival or want to, this is something to study as far as how to handle. Yeah. This is how um, you do a it. weather event. This is how you do it. Yeah, you, we've we've on we have on this show been critical of the last two or three four years and. Uh, um, I won't get too much into it, but Russ and I had a conversation with some some of the folks involved, and I had some off the camera conversations. And uh, this is just how you do it. Uh, and let I mean, I'll just go ahead and say it. Lessons were learned over the last three or four mm-hmm. years, and um, they did it right. They, they did some amazing things. But uh, let's yep, just—they deserve let's just, all the credit. Yeah, they really did. They handled it right and. Uh, you know, to be fair, it's a smaller festival. It's not 80,000 or even 40,000 people, but still. 
No, it's what? It was about 10,000? About 10. Right? Probably yeah. got close and, um, you know, they... It's uh, two stages. Yeah. But yeah. they had a tough, tough, tough decision. You know, the Bonnaroo last year was an easy call once the call had to be made because they were literally six foot, you know, or not six foot, but six inches, 12 inches in water. Right. This was one of those that it lightning and then it looked like blue skies and then it got cloudy and then it rained and you know you're thinking we can play you know it's classic uh, yeah we can finish this golf match you know just keep right <laughs> whatever and, yeah uh, and and to be clear it wasn't just rain it was lightning and right, thunder right. which was the main concern initially that's right and yeah it wasn't just like one storm there was several around that kept you know poking right. their heads out so it right. was kind of hard to really Get a, a lot of, get a lot handle of, on it. A lot of factors. How do you get everybody back in? And we'll get into all of that in yeah. detail. Uh, we we have uh, Drew Holcomb, the co-founder of the event, and uh, Ted Heinig with AC Entertainment. Uh, we're gracious enough to uh, get on the phone with uh, Russ and I, and we're going to have that. And then we're going to talk to some of the folks at the local Tivoli and Memorial Auditorium, which... Uh, managed to put together a pretty cool event so we'll get into all yeah. that but uh, we like i said we wanted to jump back in we're ready we've got lots to talk about um i think today you and i russ we're going to go ahead and run the matt carney interview right um yeah let's get that going today and uh then we've got more on the way several more uh interviews and and stuff to talk about so that's but you mentioned too but yeah I wanted to go ahead. You mentioned Lindsay. Go ahead and tell everybody yeah. who Lindsay is, because we ran into several uh, Bonnaroo people. <laughs> yeah, you know, we always all, seem it was, to run uh, into the same. Uh, we the always same one. run into uh, yeah family, the Bonnaroo fam, when we do stuff like this. But yeah, Lindsay uh, was awarded Bonnaroo of the Year earlier. If you watched that episode, and um, he's the one in in uh, in Winchester with the uh, you know twelve ish acres of farm that he hosts the mini ruse that we've had right. kind of after Bonnaroo got canceled he was uh gracious enough to host a few of us out there to come out and camp and have a good time so you know in the absence of two years of no Bonnaroo's we've kind of become friends and just hung out and talked a lot so he came to Moon River this year as a vendor he signed up to work uh the beer the beer set the beer tent in VIP which he did last year so um, he came up for that, and you know when when the word came out that we had to evacuate, he and I met up, and met up and went to the gas station, bought some beer, and then just sat in the parking garage next <laughs> across the street, uh, sat on his tailgate and just sat there and had a couple beers and hung out, played some music, and you know, yeah. <laughs> it was it was honestly fun. I mean, you know, because what else are you gonna do? Uh, yeah. And. I was going to say, Brad, if he were here, Brad has always said, as long as I've known you and Brad, that Taco is the easiest get-along guy ever. <laughs> it's like, what do you want to do? I'm in. Whatever. So I, I was actually telling my daughter and uh, son-in-law, you know, Taco's in a parking lot drinking a beer. He's having a good time. And yeah. you know, when you said Lindsay's there, I'm like, yeah, he's having a good time. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we, we weren't suffering, that's for sure. <laughs> we we made the best of it. And, you know, at this time, it, of course, he had an inside track with the people, right. with the vendors. So he was communicating with them. And everybody seemed to believe that, well, in a couple hours or right. so, this is going to open back up. So we just thought, well, let's just hang tight, let the storm pass relax and then we'll jump back in and hopefully see a few more shows and right. the word was about six or six thirty we can go back in well six thirty came along Lindsay went ahead and went on in because he said well if they're gonna i probably should help out and set up because if they're gonna reopen you know we'll need to go back to work and then he sent me a text a few minutes later and he said now this thing is not happening right. I'm, I'm packing up and right. so i think that's when i texted you guys and then i met brian again and told him yeah i don't think it's happening so yeah. and then a few minutes later that's when the official word came out that it's not opening back up and so that was on I, I sunday was, that was sunday and i could see i mean there was a lot of people around the entrance just waiting thinking they're going to get in so 
Uh, yeah, I'm sure I that mean, we've all, I mean, you know, we've all been at baseball games where it's a rain delay and you, mm-hmm. you know, you're looking at the sky and you, there's a lot of factors and, and we get into that with uh, Ted and Drew and we'll talk to uh, Nick again, but uh, that was Sunday, but uh, let's go back a little bit to Saturday. So you and I okay. both got there about what, one o'clock? Yep. Um, mm-hmm. It was, a, it was, uh, I had a good time. We did the, those two interviews time. and uh, hung yeah, out. We talked it's to a Matt. great festival. Mm-hmm. Um, we caught Briston Maroney's show there. He was yep. great, as always. Yeah, he's a, he's uh, a friend of the show, three timer. Friend of the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, who else? I think I saw, I remember I saw Natalie Hemby. Natalie Hemby was there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Drew Holcomb, of course, played uh, Saturday. Yeah, we watched Drew and uh, Ellie do three-legged races because it was their son's (laughs) fourth birthday. (laughs) Uh, You'll hear that during the uh, Wild Rivers interview. Uh, But yeah, it's it's a neat festival. It's a you know I don't want to get too too much into it because you know if you were there you were there. Uh, But it's a it's a boutique festival, which means it's in that ten to ten to twelve thousand. uh, ticketed, you know, admission, um, yeah. very curated, and, you know, it's singer songwriters. Yeah. Great and location. They, I don't think, I don't think they officially sold out. No, but they did they, not. It, it sure seemed full. I mean, it sure seemed yeah. like a, a, a packed crowd. Yeah. I was, I was I'm going to say somewhere between nine and 10,000. It, it seemed every right. bit as full as, uh, previous years when it was 12, but I don't know how much of that was because there was standing water. You know, and the mm-hmm. crowd wasn't able to, you know, maybe be shoulder to shoulder. But uh, it's a neat, right. it's a downtown festival. It's right on the river. You walk in, you bike in, you Uber in, that sort of thing. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's very accessible being right downtown. And, yeah, a lot of people will come in just for the day. That's what Daniel and Charlotte did. Right. Um, come in for the weekend. You could, you know, get a hotel, rent an Airbnb because it's not camping. No, no. I mean, you might, you might. Yeah. But no, it's, um, for yeah. the most part, if you're from out of town, you get a hotel downtown and you yeah. walk in. I mean, that's mm-hmm. part of the, the allure of it really. And part of what made Sunday difficult. So again, we'll get back into that later. Yes. That's the pluses and the minuses, but, uh, yeah, I would say that every bar and restaurant and shop on the North shore that Sunday probably had a good day whether they wanted to or not because yeah, whether they were suddenly prepared. you've got 10,000 people that are just out and are looking for something to do so yeah, yeah. every every little spot was packed and crowded cuz people just didn't want to weren't ready to go home cuz we all thought well this is going to open back up so we'll just hang out for a few hours very all right. interesting and uh like i said Brian uh Stone was kind enough to help us with our shows and we're going to have him on i hope in a episode very soon because uh i want to hear what he had to say about saturday and sunday because i think he went to the event sunday night as you said so he did. again we, yeah, there's I'd a like lot to... um I, I don't mean to short sell today's episode uh but we there's really a lot that happened on sunday that uh i think is relevant to this podcast and the industry really um as as russ said uh, how they handled it is a, you know, should be a roadmap for how you should handle these kinds of things. Uh, I think so. To... And this is right up our alley. I mean, this is right, what we exactly. kind of started the podcast to talk about. Exactly. But let's go ahead and do this one. Uh, I don't. I don't know about you, Matt. I knew a little bit about Matt before Saturday, but after talking with him, uh, cool guy. I, I loved his show. I really liked the. Uh, Paul Very, Simon, yeah, cover. great show, yeah, yeah. and uh, that that struck me because in the interview you'll hear him say, you know, I think you kind of asked, well, I guess you started out playing covers, and and he said, no, I, I'm not good at covers, I don't right. know how, I'm, you know, I just don't like it, and then to follow that up with, we go to his show and he does a great cover of yeah. Paul Simon, <laughs> a fairly well known <laughs> cover, uh-huh. with dancing yeah. band members and everything, right? I mean, mm-hmm. choreography, it was, it was great, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, I know, I know. He endeared himself to you because he's a he's a VW guy. 
Apparently so. He saw my VW logo on the shirt and, you know, asked about that. So we started talking and then, uh, yeah, come to find out we've all had several Volkswagens. Yeah, all of our first cars basically were. (laughs) Yeah. I had a Fastback. You had a, what was it? I had a... I had a notch back, and then he said he had the square back. Yeah, and that, that was funny. So it, you never know. But he was great. Uh, he's a Eugene, Oregon guy, so the rainy Saturday he was into. Uh, yeah, he he loved the weather. Yeah, I liked him. I, I thought he was I great. Um, only thing that I did hear is that he started his show a little bit early, maybe. I think he kicked off uh, oh, really? before, uh, was it Natalie? I think before Natalie ended, I think he sort of started. Oh, with, yeah. You know, whatever. Nat- Natalie was concluding at 3.30, and he was supposed to start at 3.30, yeah, so did he? Yeah. I had a couple of fans okay. say, why did he start before she was done? But anyway, huh. now we're just picking on stuff. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, he was great. Uh, anything else you wanted to mention to talk about this past weekend? Like I said, we have so much to unpack. Um, yeah, there's a lot. Um, it, overall, it turned into a great weekend. Isn't it funny? Yeah. You know, I mm-hmm. I talked to Brian uh, Stone Saturday morning. I had to go pick up some recording equipment, and it was, you know, the weather was iffy. And I think I told him, this is either going to be the worst day ever or a great day. And he said, it's going to yep. be a good day. And it was a great day. It was. Uh, yeah. Sunday Even was for looking, Brian. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Something's happened to that boy. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who's gotten a hold of him. Because he even on Sunday he was like, "Man, I'm so excited to do these interviews," and then we got rained out. Um, yep, he was upset that we got had our interviews scrapped, but uh, you know, we he, he still ended up having a good time. He he came. And hung out with us in the parking garage for a little bit before we went in. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, had I, you know, if I gotten there five minutes earlier, that's probably what I would have been doing. But Yeah. Uh, Lindsay even offered him, uh, I think he had a sour, and he offered it to Brian. He said, you want a beer? He said, oh, uh, what kind is that? I'll probably hate it. And he said, oh, give it to me anyways. And he opened it up and drank it, and he thought, I don't hate that. So I don't know what's gotten into him. Something something is is bad, bad, bad wrong. Yeah, (laughs) the curmudgeon is uh, softening up a little bit. Definitely, but uh, again, the reason we, you know, Brad's not here is we just have so much information that we need to get to in the next couple of weeks, and um, we just felt like we needed to go ahead and get started. We did, and he will join us. He'll be back in the in the coming episodes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I hope he'll be back next week. It's uh, it, nothing uh, other than just scheduling. Um, yeah. He's got a lot going on and going to yeah, a bunch to of his, shows. Yeah, to his credit, I mean, he's having a, a great time in New York. His new job is going really well. and he's Yeah, we should probably mention, because people have probably seen it on Facebook, uh, his new best friend. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, his, uh, his new yeah. BFF, Bill. What's yeah. his name? Bill Murray? Uh, is that his name? Bill Murray, I think, is an actor. Yeah. Is he an actor? It's, yeah, it's like an older guy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He'd been in a few things. You might have heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were hanging out this past weekend. So Brad is very busy um, and can't wait to get back and talking to him and um, talking about. Uh, I really want to have him, uh, I, and he will join us to talk about Sunday. Again, I keep mm-hmm. teasing that. Yeah. But, uh, again, what C3 and Live Nation and AC Entertainment and Drew Holcomb with Moon River, uh, what they did, uh, it was pretty cool. It was very, very cool. And they made a yeah. They made a whole lot of people very happy after a bad situation. So hopefully it'll yeah, be a it, blueprint. I think so. And I think that could be the difference between somebody saying, I'm never coming back to yeah. Chattanooga versus I'll be back next year you sure. know, because of how they handled it. Sure. Yeah. So we'll, we'll leave it there. We'll get to it next week. Um, but any, anything else, uh, taco before we listen to, uh, anything else? Matt Carney. Yeah. Let's, let's go to Matt Carney. I've known Drew for a long time, um, who started it and have begged, borrowed, and stealed to try to get on here. So this is my lucky year. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. This is like 
really, really beautiful. I was going to ask if you knew, Drew, one of the things that uh, I've been fortunate to talk to him over the years since he brought this here to Chattanooga from Memphis, it's, he always seems to book people he likes, <laughs> friends of his. Uh, uh, well, I would. it seems like that. Yeah, he's good at creating like a family kind of, yeah, it does feel like I know a lot of the bands. I've written with some of the artists. Um, I've hung out with them. We've talked about doing tours together. So that is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, it is like, it does feel like everyone's connected, which nice. I may, I think the, I think people feel that, you know, when they come and they're, the people are fans of each other and they've, artists have toured together. I think, yeah, people, I think so. Yeah. People feel that, yeah, right? Yeah, oh, definitely. I feel it. Yeah, yeah right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the goal when you're like going on tour, you can just take out an opener sometimes and it's like, okay, they f- this works. And it's definitely different than when like there's a relationship and then the people in the audience can feel that too, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I, Over the years, I've interviewed uh, several of the bands at like Winter Jam. And I remember some years ago talking to them and they were like, you know what? We just decided we were going to book people we like. If we're going to be <laughs> around them for a long I mean, time, <laughs> you know? Have, that's the thing. Yeah. The longer I do this, yeah, I have really talented musicians in my band, but I also, if we, you got to just like being around people because you spend a lot of your time on the road. Yeah, and, those bus rides can be long, right? Yeah, man. If the, if you got that annoying, just the person that's not choosing to fit in with everyone, that's doesn't matter how good your licks are. You know? yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, you're like, bro. That's right. You're 90 minutes or, we got, or 60 minutes we got, and the rest of the time. Yeah. <laughs> we're angry. We got 22 <laughs> hours and 30 minutes we got to spend together yeah. outside of that time. That's yeah. exactly right. I wanted to ask you um, about your career and, and your career arc, really. Um, a, a lot of artists and musicians grow and change and all that, but one of the things I I thought uh, was kind of interesting in in learning more about you and listening to your music is started out doing covers like I guess a lot of people do and then sort of it figured out what was working for you right I mean uh, that's well I, I want to go with your story but actually I literally have n- can't play covers and yeah. never have never so have. I don't know I'm yeah wow. no no okay. I like it I wanted to go there with you but no I literally started writing music because I was so bad at covers I didn't well, that's st- what I. That, there yeah. you go. Yes, I I, I. I didn't mean you were making a living at it. No, okay. but I mean, no, I mean, as in, like, I, um, I was an English major in college and didn't start doing music until I was in college, really, and I was always good at writing, and I always knew that I could put words together. It was kind of how I didn't fail high school. Was if I had could write a paper, I could get through it. So my roommate had a guitar, and I started. Honestly, I just would try to learn whatever Dave Matthews was doing at the time or somebody and I was like this is too hard so I just play a couple chords and say some stuff you know like three chords in the truth was like kind of how I started yeah. three and chords in the truth that, right you know yeah. I mean like that's that was the goal at least and so to this day I still we do a couple covers we'll maybe do one tonight but I'm they're hard for me because yeah I'm kind well, of a one-trick pony that is what I, I read and that's I just thought cool. that was interesting for you yeah, to yeah. figure it out it's kind of like I always find it fascinating how an artist uh, can realize what their talents are maybe it's a voice they have a yeah. dis- certain voice you know they might want to try to sing like Otis Redding but can't yeah you know so you go with what yeah. you can do right I mean I totally artists I love and it's probably because I'm one of them but I tend to be drawn towards artists that sometimes even have a limited kind of skill set, but they do it really well. You know, like Johnny Cash or Bob Dylan or yeah, those exactly. would be like, even like, I grew up with a lot of U2 and stuff like the edge had his pedals and like he did his thing and he, he you wouldn't put him in on any session, but right. bands like that were like, they kind of do their thing and they just stick yeah. to it. And limitations sometimes become really beautiful and so yes I I would definitely put that in I am one of those that was like I had these parameters I was learning how to sing I knew I could kind of use spoken word and some like stories but I couldn't lean on just my chops and I had to grow those as I've been touring over the years but yeah limitations are cool I think um, what well, people do interesting things with it's them. recognizing them and then kind yeah. of working with it is where I was going with this yeah. that sort of thing is like I said I I I, I know I've interviewed artists who 
want to be doing something yeah. else and then they finally figure it out or, or whatever. Um, yeah. In your head, how do you think, where do you think you are? Uh, have you, did you have that sort of, <laughs> here's what I want to do? Ah, I mean, here's what I. Interesting. Like, that is a really interesting question, as in, like, I think contentment is an interesting journey. Also, it maybe speaks to what you're talking about. Like, I, I, I do love the chase. My, me and my band always talk about this. Our Steve, my drummer, Steve Gould, he's a super talented drummer. We, all, we love to, like, talk about the shows and analyze them, and we always have, like, a powwow after the show, and it's, like, this hunger to kind of what could we have done better or what did we do that was awesome or just we post show always talk about him and he's like you just kind of like the hunt don't you like you don't even like the kill you like the like journey of like searching for something and like um so that is a very real thing in my own life to a fault sometimes you're like always yeah you're never just like hey this is great and and i think the more i've done this in my arc um yeah i think i am really Every day I get to do this, I just feel really grateful that I, I'm doing music. My last job was like, I was a barista at Starbucks, you know? And like, that's, this is pretty good. So uh, I think what I do and trying to do it and being content with it is like, made me such a better performer and I've enjoyed it so much more. I don't even know if that was your question. It but, is. But I mean, there's <laughs> no, I, I, it's just, it's that, it, to me, it's the difference in the chase, I guess. I always ask an artist, you know, how, how they feel about the latest album and it sounds like such a silly trite kind of question but does anyone ever like oh i hate it it always depends on, it <laughs> oh always man depends i do I, re recent. I really no i i generally um i actually really love my last record my newest one whatever it is january flower it came out like an hour i don't know what a year ago right. maybe a year and a half but there is a funny thing where i usually dislike there's a point when I usually dislike my last record and I like and I or I dislike a specific record and it's funny how they always change based on where I'm at and that's maybe speaks to I love to kind of do different things so one record if one record's one way I tend to have a knee-jerk reaction to try to do something that's like a little different just for my own creative curiosity you know like I was never doing the same thing you know and every time I've tried to kind of chase something before, it's usually never successful. So then I get really frustrated right. with whatever those moments are where you're like, oh, you're trying to emulate that one song that was really big and it never works. Yeah. So it's always like, whenever you're swinging the other way and like, okay, what are we just doing because we love, I are always tend to be the moments that um, really resonate for a long time. Yeah. But but it does change all the time. Like it does, and and it, I've done this enough times that I've interviewed bands multiple times. So one album will be the you know overproduced. We're going to spend yeah twelve months doing everything, and then the next one we're going to go back to our roots and do an acoustic set or yeah. a hard rock set or something. So it just changes. I think you have to have a couple albums under your belt too before you can like literally admit to yourself as an artist that like oh I missed it on that one. Because we know they got like four records. You can't be like... Right, right, right. A quarter of my career, I, I was a phony. No. Or like... <laughs> but I do think when you... The, the longer you do it, you can look back and be like... Those moments weren't as successful. Um, and you can kind of figure out why. Like, oh, maybe I was, I was trying to... Yeah, put on a hat that didn't fit. Or I was trying to listen to the audience too much. Or management. Or producer had too much power. Or did not enough power or I wasn't listening to my band enough I don't know you know there's there is those interesting journeys you have you look back at your projects and um, and you like learn from them uh, that kind of gets to the question I asked a little bit earlier in your head how, how do you do you think you're this is what you want that yeah sound to be or I'm really so? proud of yeah, yeah I think I really cool. I don't know how else to do it then like if you don't love it yeah your test market if your test market is you in the studio or with a guitar and if you don't love it you're already starting like it's like a dude making an ice cream for an ice cream shop and he's like well I think people like right, chocolate right. strawberry and you taste it, you're like I don't really like yeah, this yeah. but people will buy it like that's that's not a good start you gotta right. be like that's fair. Oh, I love this ice cream 
Like, you gotta be like, yo, you gotta taste my ice cream. This is the best ice cream you ever had. And if you don't believe that... Yeah, you have to believe it. Yeah, your test yeah, market yeah. is not... You're mm-hmm. already a, a... Rick Rubin always says, if you don't love it, you're already starting in a deficit. Like, maybe someone else will like it because you're doing something... I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, I don't... I just try to love it. And if you're if you're a big fan of it, you're... You also kind of can't lose because you're doing something you love. And last question for me, really: What does weather like this? What does it do to you, dude? This as a we talk about the Bonnaroo experience. Yeah, it, you're you're camping. You're committed. Yeah, oh, you're in. And the and the audi- yeah. the artists seem to know that. You know, you know, you've got an audience that wants to be there, that is committed, that is yeah hardcore. Does this? things like days like this does it sort of impact that at all or i mean what do we got we got some like overcast definitely overcast a little wet what is it 70 yeah heat wise 71 71 yeah i i see now you're talking to a kid i grew up in eugene oregon good point so this is like (laughs) this is a solid eight months of my year so i am like this is actually I, I, the one thing I like about this is is the fatigue of like just heat, like it. That's a it's a beat down for people yeah. to be in. We played Hinterland this year, and it was a hundred. It was the hottest show I ever played. It was like a heat index of a hundred and nine. I and I ran out and there was like I made this joke about this tree that was like there's one tree in the middle of the crowd, and I was like, this is the most coveted tree. This tree has lived its whole life for this. Everyone was in the shade. It was like, it was literally like, like a (laughs) refugee boat, like stacked into the shade of this tree. Yeah. And I, I tried to run out there to the tree and I literally almost passed out, which was a terrible idea. But, um, I don't know something about this kind of weather. I find it comforting because I'm used to overcast and like lights look better. Like, you know, nice. there's like everybody's kind of chilling. There's like a little melancholy yeah. to mm-hmm. it, which I love. I'm like, yeah. we're all, we could be here all day. You're ne- you, nice. You could drink. You don't have to like drink 64 ounces of water yeah. or you'll die, kind of deal. Yeah. yeah, we're familiar with that heat. I've seen like the tree where people would sit and line up, and as, yeah. the, sh- as the shadow moved, they yeah, were slowly, yeah, holes. slowly yeah. moving their way in. Yeah, yeah. man. I know like this is beautiful. I mean, I was. A, it's a little bit of a bummer when you're we you're watching the the radar you're like ah i hope it doesn't rain like pour when we're playing that's never fun right but this feels pleasant i'm nice i'm in very cool me too yeah if it stays like this all day we're we're gonna be fine it's gonna be great it's gonna yeah be great rush you have any other questions i've uh, dominated as i, I always it's do fine yeah i think i think i'm just looking forward to your set i love it you're yeah. a westfalia you have a westfalia I van do. yeah yeah uh, he's got rust, a volkswagen shirt on rust with the bus rust with the bus and uh i love said, it yeah bring it to bonnaroo what year 1978 78 yeah year i was born the year before I don't was tell born. anybody it's got the <laughs> bed up pipe, yeah it's pop, pop up. top it's camper really cool. the rooftop tent um couch everything my first car was a 68 square back my oh, dad okay. let me buy it. it was like they kind of look like a station wagon yeah, kind of like but they're little wagon. yeah it's a it's they're a like a little three. tiny yeah. station wagon. Yeah, i had a, a notch back which was the oh yeah those version. are cool yeah. ours was mine was a fastback oh you, you had, had the fastback fast we had oh, them all covered all three <laughs> we, yeah. we had all time threes covered <laughs> yeah. there was one other one too i think they did for do you the there was one year where they had another one i thought that was a weird one uh the fastback was rounded yeah, yeah. that notch was back the, was uh, like the sedan yes and they Maybe didn't we did sell have those covered. in the U.S. They, they, it had to be imported. That Okay, those are the yeah. ones that are hard to get. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. real hard. Those get. are like the, yeah, I was awesome. I drove it. My, I ran out of oil one day, and oh. we had to, yeah, it was That's, bad. Well, ours, we had a driveway that went up a hill, and I don't remember if it was me or my brother, didn't know how to do clutch very well, so it got stuck halfway up. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to get a neighbor to come. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah. We learned. Matt, thank you so much for your time. Man. Always yes, a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. This Look is forward fun. to your set, and uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, and, and I appreciate you giving us so much time. Honor to be here. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah, there you go. So that was Matt Carney. Uh, like I said, really nice guy, right? I enjoyed talking to him. I did, too. I, I would hang out with him all day. Yeah, I got the feeling that he, that once the microphone's off, he, he wanted to talk some more VW. I, he kind of did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice guy. And it was a really fun show. Like I said, it was surprised me. I, I, 
I had listened to some of his music and I, I thought it was a little more uh, spoken word, sort of rap oriented, but it was very mm-hmm. much uh, uh, a lot of vocals and the band was was very prominent. And like we said, the the Paul Simon uh, Call Me Al was uh, totally unexpected. It was, and I think his, his show was one of my highlights of the weekend. Yeah, so, I agree. Very, very happy. I didn't even ask you that. Yeah, what was what was your highlight? I would say him and Briston were up there. Um, yeah. Natalie Hemby was also really good. Um, Saturday or Sunday, Sammy Ray, um, she was really good. For and two songs, I was huh? for her two songs, and I was excited because I was like, "Oh, we're about to go, you know, interview her." And yeah. then, of course, it got scrapped. So I felt bad for her that her set got cut short. But she was able to go and perform at the memorial that night when they announced the the makeup yep. concert so yeah she she got to i'm sure she had a great time there too i have a feeling and that's why i i, I uh i think that's why i reached out to you monday morning and uh kept pushing i i have a feeling this is going to be one of these events that uh, we're going to talk about for a long long time so i think so and yeah. i think those bands they were all so nice um you know the ones that were we were supposed to talk to on Sunday. They were reaching out and saying, "Hey, are we still doing this?" So, I have a feeling, you know, maybe not tomorrow, not next week, but it'll it'll happen. So, at some point, and who knows, some of, of these people you might see on the Bonnaroo lineup in a year or two. You just absolutely, never know. and hopefully they will they will remember that we tried to talk to them. So, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right man well thanks it, it was okay. great hanging out and uh great hanging yes, out thank today you. And, mm-hmm. and and thanks, glad everybody. to be back yeah yeah we've kind of been on a little hiatus but want to get back into it we got a lot to talk about so i think you're exactly subscribe right subscribe if you're not already a lot of changes going on so yeah subscribe and yeah, hit, yeah. hit the like and all that other stuff you're supposed mm-hmm. to do please do yeah all right thanks guys okay Consequence Podcast Network.